In the winter of 1692, a small town in Massachusetts called Salem became consumed by fear. Strange behaviour began to surface, particularly among young women. They would suddenly fall into fits, convulsions and trances, leaving their families and neighbours bewildered and terrified. Fits, trances and screams filled homes and echoed through the streets. The once peaceful town was now a place of chaos and dread. The afflicted would cry out in pain, their bodies contorting in unnatural ways. The people of Salem, deeply religious and superstitious, believed the devil was among them. They turned to their faith for answers, gathering in churches to pray for deliverance from the evil they believed had taken hold of their community. They were caught in the grip of what would become one of the darkest chapters in American history, the Salem Witch Trials. Accusations flew as fear and suspicion spread like wildfire. Neighbours turned against neighbours, and friends became foes. This terrifying episode serves as a stark reminder of the dangers of mass hysteria and the fragility of justice in the face of fear. The trials led to the execution of 20 people, most of them women, and the imprisonment of many more. It was a time when reason was overshadowed by panic, and the consequences were devastating. The Salem Witch Trials remain a powerful example of how fear can distort reality and lead to tragic outcomes. The Salem Witch Trials did not erupt in a vacuum. They were the culmination of a long history of fear and superstition that had been brewing for centuries. They were profoundly influenced by the centuries-old witch hunts that had plagued Europe. From the late 15th century to the early 18th century, Europe was gripped by a wave of hysteria and paranoia. For centuries, fear of witches had gripped many parts of Europe. Communities were torn apart by accusations and trials, often based on little more than rumour and fear. People believed these individuals practised evil magic, made pacts with the devil and could inflict harm on others. The fear of the unknown and the need to find a scapegoat for misfortunes led to widespread panic. These beliefs, fueled by superstition and religious fervour, led to the persecution and execution of thousands of innocent people, mostly women. The trials were often brutal, with confessions extracted under torture and executions carried out in public. The Salem settlers, carrying these deeply ingrained beliefs with them from their homelands, were primed to see witchcraft as a real and present danger. The fear and suspicion that had once gripped Europe found fertile ground in the New World, leading to one of the most infamous episodes of mass hysteria in American history. Salem in the late 17th century was a community already riddled with tensions. The small Puritan settlement was marked by social and economic divisions. Disputes over land, religious leadership and the harsh realities of frontier life created an atmosphere of mistrust and suspicion. The strict moral code of Puritan society with its emphasis on conformity and obedience, further fueled anxieties. This pressure cooker of social, economic and religious anxieties created fertile ground for accusations of witchcraft to take root and spread like wildfire. The Salem Witch Trials began with the accusations of several young women who claimed to be afflicted by witchcraft. These accusations, fueled by fear and fueled by personal grievances, quickly spiralled out of control. The first accused were Tituba, a slave, Sarah Good, a beggar, and Sarah Osborne, an impoverished elderly woman. These marginalised women, already vulnerable in Salem's rigid social hierarchy, became easy scapegoats for the community's anxieties. As accusations multiplied, they began to target more prominent members of Salem society, highlighting the power of fear and suspicion to erode social bonds. Section 5. Spectral Evidence, Shadows and Deception Central to the Salem Witch Trials was the use of spectral evidence, a particularly insidious form of proof. This spectral evidence referred to the ability of the accusers to see the spirits or spectres of the accused attacking them. These invisible tormentors, visible only to the accusers, were deemed proof of witchcraft. The acceptance of such intangible and unverifiable evidence highlights the power of mass hysteria and the breakdown of reason that can occur in a climate of fear. The trials themselves were a travesty of justice. The accused, presumed guilty, were subjected to humiliating examinations, 
and pressured to confess. Those who confessed were often coerced or driven by desperation to escape further persecution. Those who maintained their innocence, like the resolute Rebecca Nurse, faced grim consequences. With spectral evidence as the primary form of proof, and confessions often obtained through dubious means, the trials lacked any semblance of fairness or due process. Section 7. The End of the Terror. A Reckoning. As the accusations and executions continued, doubts began to emerge even among those who had initially supported the trials. The growing unease, coupled with the accusations against increasingly respected figures, led to a gradual shift in public opinion. Finally, in the fall of 1692, Governor William Phipps stepped in to halt the trials, ordering a review of the cases and releasing many of those still imprisoned. The Salem Witch Trials, fueled by fear, suspicion and religious extremism, finally came to an end. The aftermath of the Salem Witch Trials left deep scars on the community. Families were torn apart, reputations were ruined, and the social fabric of Salem was irrevocably damaged. The trials also cast a long shadow over the history of New England, serving as a stark reminder of the dangers of religious extremism and the fragility of justice. In the years that followed, many involved in the trials, including some of the accusers, publicly expressed remorse for their actions. Section 9. Salem's Enduring Legacy, A Cautionary Tale the Salem witch trials continue to captivate and disturb us centuries later. They serve as a cautionary tale about the dangers of mass hysteria, the abuse of power, and the importance of critical thinking. The events of 1692 in Salem serve as a stark reminder of how easily fear and suspicion can grip a community, leading to the persecution of the innocent. The Importance of Critical Thinking Lessons from Salem the Salem Witch Trials offer profound lessons about the importance of critical thinking and the need to question authority. In the late 17th century, the small village of Salem was gripped by a wave of hysteria that led to the wrongful persecution and execution of many innocent people. This dark chapter in history serves as a stark reminder of the dangers of mass hysteria and the consequences of abandoning rational thought. The events of 1692 demonstrate how easily fear fueled by superstition and unquestioned beliefs, can lead to injustice. The trials were marked by a lack of proper legal procedures, with spectral evidence and dubious testimonies being used to convict the accused. This atmosphere of fear and suspicion created a fertile ground for false accusations and wrongful convictions. By remembering Salem, we are reminded to approach accusations with scepticism, to demand evidence, and to protect the vulnerable from becoming scapegoats for our fears and anxieties. It is crucial to ensure that justice is based on solid evidence and rational deliberation, rather than on fear and prejudice. The Salem Witch Trials underscore the importance of due process and the protection of individual rights. The lessons of Salem are as relevant today as they were centuries ago, serving as a timeless reminder of the importance of vigilance in defence of justice and reason. In our modern world, where misinformation can spread rapidly and fear can easily take hold, the principles of critical thinking and scepticism are more important than ever. By learning from the past, we can strive to create a more just and rational society where the rights of individuals are protected and the truth is always sought. <laughs>